Hello, I'm James Tobias. I'm the course coordinator of the Art and Design Extended Diploma here at East Sussex College Lewis. The whole point of the Level 3 Art and Design course is to kind of, in the first year, is to try a broad range of 2D and 3D disciplines in art and design. So the students will undertake drawing, painting, printmaking, a bit of photography, a bit of graphic design, uh, as well as 3D processes like sculpture and probably product design. And by experimenting with these broad uh, subjects and doing working on projects with them, they begin to establish where their strengths lie. So it's almost like a diagnostic process where you try before you buy. So they do all of these broad range of subjects where there are practical projects attached to them. So when they come to the end of the first year, when they undertake an FMP, they can actually work on a broad theme like time and choose a specialism that plays to their strengths. When we go into the second year, they do one design project, they do one fine art project, and then they write their own project. And again, this is a whole process of beginning to channel their energies towards a specialism. So sometimes the best analogy of that is by the end of the first year, I want them to have achieved the subsidiary diploma, which is nine units. But by the second year, they would have got the extended diploma, but they might be someone like George, the sculptor, or they might be someone like uh, Meg, who might be a photographer, or it might be someone like Rowan, who wants to be a costume designer. So they can actually begin to take that sort of focus in their work and that application, which will then prepare them for their future careers. So it starts at level three. So it's a level three qualification, it's a full-time course. And then as I say, part of that full-time course requires resilience, organization, determination, as well as creativity, and the desire to do all of the units before specializing in specific individual ones. It tracks exactly the same UCAS points as an A-level. So if a student gets three distinction stars, that's the equivalent of them getting A stars in every one of their single A-level subjects. The expectation is for students to do this qualification is they need to have a four or above at GCSE Art and Design and hopefully a four or above in Maths and English and alongside two other GCSEs. So we like them to come with a package of five GCSEs, a four or above. Um, obviously the higher the grade in art kind of convinces me but also the student taking the work they're going to be able to deal with the amount of work that the course requires in terms of research, investigation, exploration of materials before they come up with ideas to produce as outcomes. So this is why the English qualification is so important because part of what the students have to do is annotate their work to explain their working methods and processes. They can't just do it purely visually, they have to kind of put into words describing what they're doing, explaining how they're going to do it and justifying why. Well, the nice thing about this course is it, we, we're not churning out, it's not like a sausage factory where we just churn out identical sausages at the end of it. They don't kind of come to me and they kind of all come from loads of different courses, uh, uh, whether it's textiles or art or photography or um, uh, what else did they, they might have done? They might have done a, a GCSE in graphics, uh, design technology is another one. So you get this kind of melting pot of loads and loads of students from different schools with different skills and we kind of want to exploit that, that kind of, there's not an expectation for them all to produce exactly the same outcomes. So what do they end up doing? Well, I've had as, as much breadth of students going on to do degrees in animation to students doing degrees in furniture design. Uh, students that might even want to specialize in something like a uh, very fine art subject, like fine art painting and sculpture, or something that's very much more design discipline to it, like prosthetic makeup and uh, design. Uh, one of my, strongest students that I've taught in recent years has ended up becoming a costume designer for things like Games of Thrones and doing things like um, she did the, the she was a costume runner for what was that ba was it Bad Education what was that one with Jack Whitehall in it is it called Bad Education yeah it's that one called Bad Education so she she's been involved in that so where students want to take it is primarily what their skills and specialisms lead them towards with our uh, sort of guidance and uh, encouragement to facilitate that design. We like to make sure all projects are interesting uh, and obviously when it comes to the FMP the students write their own projects so hopefully they've got enough sort of um, interest and motivation what kind of what they want to focus on but along the way the journey that we take is sometimes we do in-house projects but then we also work with live briefs and live clients and I think those are sometimes the projects the students that enjoy the most so in the past 
my uh, current second years have worked with an organisation called Human Nature where they worked in teams to make parklets. We've also worked with uh, Same Sky, they're a community arts group doing burning clocks, uh, making large sculptural lanterns. And then we've also done, uh, we do each year and have done for the last eight years a live brief with the Royal Opera House where the students design and make either a poster, a costume, hair wigs and makeup or a set design for a given opera or ballet. Uh, and the students initially kind of worried about that because it's opera <laughs> or ballet but they end up really enjoying it because it gives them a real sort of sense of focus to work on a live brief. One of the key ideas I Okay, um, I would actually probably say the key skills rather than ideas, though I will answer that as best I can. But the key skills they need to come with is a, a desire to learn, uh, a capacity to uh, take feedback in the spirit it's intended. So you've got to be very open-minded and receptive to criticism, because no one likes to be told then maybe not doing something well. But if you're open-minded and receptive to advice, then that's going to be something that's going to take your work forward. But also just a desire to try things out, not be afraid. Uh, you know, it's a leap of faith sometimes doing things that take you out of your comfort zone, but that's where you learn the most. There's a, uh, a maxim called fail fast, fail often, where a student can actually do something, and if they do it quickly, if it's bad, they can try again and make it better. Whereas if you spend ages and ages of time doing something that you end up failing on, then sadly, you kind of not got enough time to improve it. So fail fast and fail often, but learn from that and hopefully kind of see the benefit of working in an environment which is conducive to learning, but also learning off each other. You know, I'm still learning, and I like to think all my students are as well. Well, touch wood, <laughs> we get really outstanding results. Uh, and this is another reason why I think I'm particularly proud of the course that we do here at Lewis, is because the success rate is incredibly high. Uh, so, for example, last year, out of the 18 learners that finished the second year, uh, something like 65%, 70% got three distinction stars. Uh, and no student has failed thus far on this qualification. Um, so, the expectations are high, the demands are increasingly sort of uh, high, primarily because of me, but also because of each other, and by the students' expectations and demands should also be to that kind of level. So, yeah, I would think that uh, we have incredibly good success levels and within the Royal Opera House Design Challenge in the last sort of eight years that we've been doing it we've won 14 awards and last year during the lockdown when we did Carmen we won three out of the five awards that were on offer. Well I think I've alluded to it before but I'll, I'll say again when, what students tend to do when they've finished here is as broad as their interest levels. So I've had students do animation, graphic design, illustration, fine art painting, printmaking, photography, uh, hair wigs and makeup, prosthetic design, uh, sculpture, furniture, prop, set. So, you know, the whole remit, the whole broad gamut within art and design, there's no one specific sort of uh, direction that the students take in. This year particularly, I've also got one student that's got recently a university offer, to, offer at Lincoln, she sat up there, uh, to do paper conservation, oh sorry, painting conservation at Lincoln University. So, you know, again, maybe something that's not immediately that you think of when they're doing art and design, but definitely related within the art and design industry. I've also taught a few teachers as well. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Uh, well, obviously, I want as many students to come here as they want to. So, you know, I like I like working with students. I mean, that's what we've been doing for X number of years. The more, the merrier. But you have to be, as I say, resilient. You have to be show good degrees of uh, perseverance and persistence with your work. You can't give up readily. I mean, that's one thing that frustrates me is if students kind of give up the first problem they hit. But also just something where you can bring your creativity to the fore, you know, being, being very open-minded to new challenges, but also giving me stuff to kind of look at and think, that's the first time I've ever seen a student do that. Have opened my eyes, because that's my job, is to open your eyes. <laughs>